Let's start on InDesign Classroom in a Book, Chapter 8, Working with Color. Once again, you want to start at Canvas, go to Assignments, download the Classroom in a Book zip file to your flash drive or your desktop. I've already downloaded it. Right click and extract all or uh, decompress on a Mac. Double click and let's see what we've got today. Today we've got a folder within a folder. It has a links folder so we know that it's packaged. We know that it has a couple of different images inside. We've got an end document, a start document, and this flyer IDPP which we're going to play with later. Let's go ahead and start with the start document. We're going to say yes, please go ahead and update links. If you need to, go ahead and tell it to sync the fonts. Let's do a file, save as, and change this to 08 color. Make sure you're saving it in your chapter 8 folder and push save. The first part of this chapter covers a lot of information about how to manage color because what you see on one screen is not necessarily what you're going to see on another screen or what necessarily would be produced in print. Therefore we need to have color management and that's quite a few of the things that we work on here in the beginning of this chapter. We'll start with view, display performance, and high quality. See how the A got a little bit sharper? We've uh, worked with that a little bit. If you only want to see the text if you do display performance fast, it'll hide all of those graphics for you. So it's a way to make it go a little bit faster. So let's switch it back to high quality display. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the color settings. Let's go ahead and go into edit and color setting. Down here towards the bottom. For our purposes, we pretty much want to leave it here on North American General Purpose 2. But you'll notice there's quite a few different numbers here, things that um, if you're a professional printer you worry about. We, for the most part, are not too worried about it, but I do want you to see that there are quite a few things going around in the background in order to control color. All right, so let's say OK. So what am I talking about? Let's go to Window, Arrange. And I want to go ahead and say new window for color IDD. So it's actually going to show me both the same document again. But we're going to play with it just a little tiny bit. We're going to do what's called proofing colors to see how it would look on different types of screens and different types of paper. We're going to go to view and prove colors. We go to prove colors it's going to let us play with things a little bit. Let's go to View and Proof Setup. We want to go ahead and go to Custom. It's going to ask us what device do you want to simulate. We want to go ahead and drop down quite a bit to Dot Gain 20. And we're going to push OK. If we do that, it shows us what is this document going to look like in a grayscale. So it allows us, the proofing allows us to see how will this look in a lot of different ways. So these are called soft proofing options. I'm going to go ahead and close that up and go back to where we are. So we've got some printing requirements. Printing is done in what's called CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, which are the primary ink colors. So let's go ahead and go to Window, Output, and let's go ahead and go to pre-flight. When you're working on a screen, you're working on what's called RGB color, which is red, green, and blue. But as I just said, printers work with ink, which is cyan, yellow, magenta, and black, so CMYK. So one's working with light, one's working with ink. So it changes a little bit. We want to go ahead and click on our panel options, the hamburger menu and we want to define a profile. We want to go ahead and load a profile which is down here toward the bottom. Looks like a hamburger menu. And load profile. We're going to go ahead and navigate into lesson 8, double click, and we want flyer profile and open. So now it's telling this the printer quite a few things in advance with this information. 
So we're going to go ahead and say yes, this is what we want, and say OK. With this selected, let's go ahead and look at quite a, a few things. Let's go to color. Oh, let's go back in. Let's load it again. Uh, let's look at color, and we're saying color spaces and modes not allowed, which means we want to make sure that everything that happens within this document is going to be okay for the printer. Because we know it's for the printer, we need to make sure the colors are not RGB, that they're converted to CMYK. So we're saying please check to make sure we don't have any color specifies as RGB. So we're going to say okay. All right, so now let's look at the pre-flight. Remember we worked with pre-flight in chapter 13 to make sure there aren't any errors. We just loaded this new document. So let's go ahead and look at flyer profile and see what happens. Now we have one error. So let's find out what the error is. Let's go to our triangle and click down. Color space not allowed. Text frame number one, if we double click, we can see that we have an, we have an object that is we do info that is using an RGB color instead of CMYK, which we can't have happen. So let's go ahead and go to window. Let's go to color. And we want to go to swatches. We want to double click on this swatch, which is the sage green. And we're saying replace this instead of being RGB. We want you to make it a CMYK instead, right up here. So we're asking it to convert those numbers and say OK. It's going to check. And now we have no errors. So that's, that's pretty awesome. So far, we're so good. So getting the print from the screen to paper is kind of a complicated process. All right, how do we create colors? How do we make our own colors when we're creating an InDesign document? There's a lot of different ways to do it, and we're going to go through quite a few right now. All right, one thing that we have is called a Pantone matching system, which means instead of having selective color, selective uh, definitions of, say, what is green, Pantone uses a certain amount of each color of ink in order to create those specific colors. So when you ask for a certain color of red, here in France and somewhere else, everywhere you get the same color red using the Pantone system. Let's go ahead and window and color and swatches again. Oh, I closed it. All right, and we're gonna open that. And we wanna create a new color swatch. So we're gonna go to the hand hamburger menu and to the top one, which is new color swatch. It's going to say, OK, what do you want to create? We want to actually select a Pantone color, which is a spot color. So when you're printing, the printer has to create separate plates, which are metal plates with parts of the image burned onto it. So they have one for cyan, one for magenta, one for yellow, one for black. If you want a specialized color, you have to have a separate plate for that, which is called a spot color. So maybe your company has a certain color blue that they use for their logo. If you want to make sure that you get that exact blue, we have to do a spot color. So our color type is going to be spot color. And we want to make sure we're in, we want to do Pantone solid coated, which gives us a selection of colors. And we want to go ahead and specify that color, which is 265, which is a particular color of purple. We want to make sure it does not get added to my library, because this may be a color that I'm only using for this one time. It might not be a color that I need to use frequently. If it's my logo color for my company, you betcha I'm going to put it in my library. I'm going to go ahead and push OK. Now you'll notice it added it to the bottom of my swatches panel. Right here, you can see that instead of the dots, you have a circle in the center, which tells us that that is a spot color instead. All right, so let's go ahead and push Control-S to save it. 
All right, so let's do a couple other things. What are some other ways we can create some CMYK swatches? You want to create swatches, not colors, because swatches will be uniform from and can be transferred to another publication where colors necessarily can't. So let's go, but sometimes we need to start with a color. So let's go window and color and color to display. panel. Alright, so we have a couple options here. We want to go ahead and create our own color. We're going to go ahead and go to the left and you should have this tool right here which is called a color theme tool. Within the color theme tool we want to get the eyedropper. The eyedropper will allow us to pick up a particular color. So we can choose, I'm going to control plus and scroll in, we want to go ahead and make sure that our color matches this particular color of orange in Choose. So I just click over it and notice that my CMYK is now picking up the different colors. I could choose with my eyedropper this purple, I could choose the brown. I've got a lot of different choices. So I've got that purple or the orange right now. So let's, based on where you click, you could get a variety of different options. I'm going to go ahead and fine tune it. I want my cyan to be zero my magenta to be 73.33 my yellow to be 99.6 and I don't want to have any black in it at all so now I've got this exact color and I want to go ahead and choose to add that swatch to my color panel so I go click here and if I scroll down I get add to swatches so if you look at my swatches panel right now that brand new color I just made is on there. So let's go ahead and try something else. We want to make another color. We know that we want it to be CMYK and so we're going to go ahead and base it off the beginning of this color right here on the swatch. So we're going to hit the post-it note which is the new swatch option and it's going to make a copy of it. Let's double click it and we can actually make a few changes. We're going to go ahead and make sure it's still processed, it's still CMYK, but we're going to change the cyan to 95, the magenta to 85, the yellow to 40, and the black to 30. So we get a particular color of dark blue. And notice now that is added to my swatches menu. So what's another way to add a color to our swatches menu. We can alt click new swatch and it's going to automatically pop that open uh, open the last one for us. So let's create one more color. Our cyan is going to be 35. Magenta will be 90. Our yellow, you can tab between these as well, 95. And our black is going to be 0. So we get kind of this funky rusty color. And let's, we do not want it selected, and let's say OK. So now we've created four different colors here that we're going to use throughout this publication. So let's go ahead and get used to using those. Of course, Adobe gives us 10 different ways to do everything, and ways to apply font or color is no exception. So let's start with how do we apply some color to the back page? Let's go ahead and go view fit page and window so we can see the whole thing. I'm going to switch this to normal mode so I can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to grab my selection tool and click the outside box because I want to make a background color, a background frame. I'm going to go ahead and go to fill, which is my fill, which is right here on top, and I click and I see all those new colors that I just made. I'm going to go ahead and choose that new orange that I just created as my background. Now, let's change some more colors. Let's click on the box for experience the evolution. You can go over here to swatches to fill to that front, just the box, and choose the C65 number. And now it's going to fill that C65 right here. All right, let's go ahead and paste, click outside, make sure we don't have any selected. Now, another way to add color, you can take the swatch itself and drag it 
over the box that you want to put it on. So of course we have quite a few different ways. Let's go ahead and control S to save it. Now let's go ahead and add some strokes. A line is a stroke. So this may look like a rectangular box, but it's really not. We want to go ahead and change the color of that stroke. So right now if you look on our swatches menu, you've got a none and a swatch. I'm going to hit that little arrow to reverse it. So now I've got my stroke on the front. And I want to go ahead and specify that that color is going to be this red instead. And push OK. Now it made it a little bit skinny. I don't want skinny. I'm going to go ahead and bump it back up to 7 or so. So now I have a red line. Eh, 7 is a bit skinny. Let's go ahead and bump it up to 10 instead. Now I can add a stroke to that if I wanted to. No, I can't. All right, so I've got a red line going through the middle. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to this one called Trust. And you'll notice this box has a frame around it. We can also change the color of the frame on that one as well. We want to change the stroke. Right now it's telling us it is black. We want to change it to dark blue. So I'm going to go ahead and on my swatches, click the dark blue instead. Click my dark blue and now I have a dark blue instead of a black. So what else can we do? We can change the color of our text. Let's go ahead and this experience the evolution. Let's grab our text tool, highlight just the words experience the evolution because we only want those colors to change. You'll notice that over here in your swatches you now have a text fill color and a no stroke color. Let's go ahead and with the fill blocks selected, so it's on the front, let's go ahead and choose that dark blue. So now when I click outside I can see that I have my dark blue selected for my fill box. Let's go ahead and look at First Fridays, do a control A and select everything because I want to change First Fridays from black to something else. Let's go ahead and choose that kind of burgundy burnt color, the one that starts with C35. And because we had everything selected we applied it to everything. All right, one more. Let's try beautiful mosaics. And we want to actually change all those words, so control select A again. And let's go ahead and make it paper this time. Paper is white. You want to make white. All right, let's go and look at the word art. If we double click the word art, we can go up to the word the Pantone 265 and choose that. We can go to window and stroke and decide we want to have a stroke on it as well. The stroke we're going to go ahead and make as one point. So now we should have the fill is Pantone, the stroke is black. Now our, our box right now is, my box right now is purple. Yours might be green. I'm going to go ahead and grab my swatch and drag green onto it and make it green. So I've got a purple on green. All right, so maybe sometimes you want to work with what's called a tint. A tint is a degree of a color, but lightened up a little bit. So let's go ahead, view, fit page on window, make sure we can see the whole thing. Let's grab our selection tool. Let's go to that yellow swatch. Let's go ahead and check the fill box, because we want it to be fill. Click here to our panel menu. And we want to do a new tint swatch, which means a new, based on this color, what are we going to choose? Except right now I'm on the red instead of the yellow. Make sure I'm on the yellow for that. Click on my hamburger menu, new tint swatch. And I'm going to go ahead and choose, I want my tint to be 65%, not 100%. And I'm going to say OK. So now I have got a color that's similar to my yellow. It's based on my yellow, but it's not as bright. So let's go ahead and grab that yellow, drag it over First Friday, and see how all of a sudden we've got a lighter color of, of yellow that we didn't have before. All right, another thing we can do with color is play with a gradient. So let's go ahead in the new gradient swatch, which is right up here at the top new gradient swatch. It's going to say, what do you want to call it? I want to call it blue slash white. 
All right, so I need to define what blue slash white means. On this left stop marker, I have to tell it what color do I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this blue, this 65 right now. And I wanna go ahead with this left stop marker, I still want the location to be, I want it to be five. So let's clean that up just a little bit. All right, with my right side stop marker, I wanna go ahead and set that to paper, but I wanted to make sure it's at 70. So I'm gonna make sure I clean this up to 70. And then I'm gonna say, okay. So now if you look at your swatches, you now have a blue and white swatch so you can create a gradient. Now gradients can be a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and apply the gradient to the experience evolution section. I'm gonna go ahead and select my gradient color and I'm going to click and hold, I'm going to select my box and click my gradient. I'm going to click and hold, no I'm not. I'm going to grab my gradient swatch tool over here on the toolbar. Now, if I click and hold and drag, I can control the direction of how that gradient is going to lay in. So it's completely up to you. You can do half box so you can do more up and down you can play with this however you like there's a lot of different things you can do with the gradient just make sure to apply it you're putting on this gradient swatch tool so now you can decide I want to keep this group of colors I'm going to be using these for time to come so we want to go ahead and create a new color group so let's go ahead and click the hamburger hit new color group it's going to say, what do you want to call this? Let's call this art show. And say, okay. So now you're going to see we get a folder called art show. I'm going to go ahead and take all these colors. I'm going to click the top one, shift, click the bottom one, and drag them into this folder called art show. So then I get all of these colors in my art show folder so I can have them to use in the future. You should get a line to display, see, just like that. And now all those colors are in there. All right, so we've got our final document here. You want to go ahead and hit W so you can kind of see what you've done. Go ahead, file, package. I'm going to make sure I have no errors. Package. Go ahead and save it. Go ahead and continue. D, first initial, last name, underscore InDesign, classroom in a book, chapter 8. Packaged. Making sure I'm putting it in my, pack, my chapter 8 folder. And say package. Then I'm going to upload chapter 8 package to Canvas. And that's all for this one.